Coming up, we turn a severely worn antique chair into a throne fit for a king. At over 100 years old, this Edwardian chair has clearly seen better days. Despite its appearance, it is still able to be restored to its former glory. That is what we're going to do today. Removing the already detached back support and tidying it up is the first thing we do. Wood preparation is one of the most vital components to wooden furniture restoration. Without doing so could affect the process further down the line. Removing loose nails and pins from the wood allows us to have a solid base to start from. Stripping and sanding the frame is done in order to remove old varnish and any stray splintered bits of wood that may have arisen over its lifetime. The back support of the chair is marked with a Stanley blade in preparation before the adhesive. Ensuring the chair maintains structure and so that it can be sat on without worry of its support, weak and cracked parts are glued back together and forced shut with a clamp. Waiting for the glue to dry can take a number of hours. We shall let it set overnight to ensure its strength. Mobility of the chair is an important factor. The use of caster wheels allow for easy movement. Attaching them is a simple process of drilling holes for the wheels to sit in. This is something that shall be finished off later. Staining the wood allows us to seal the material and preserve its beauty.
Once stained, the wood is then polished. This process requires multiple applications. Doing so makes sure that the wood is protected. To guarantee a sturdy base, the webbing material is woven. This structured woven pattern is known as a crosshatch. It's a deceivingly strong pattern that is still used in modern furniture today. It is this webbing that shall hold the foam for the chair. Due to the age and deterioration of this chair, additional bits of wood are added on the arms to support its frame. Here, we are using pine. It is not essential for the two types of wood to match as the newly added pine will be hidden under the padding we are adding later. Next, the lining is added. The lining adds an additional layer of support to protect the foam from wear and tear. Once the foam is cut to shape, Dacron is used to cover the foam. The use of Dacron aids the chair by creating a curved appearance ready for the fabric.
red velvet is used to finish off this historic relic. Look at the new wheels. Finishing touches are everything. Upholstery tacks are applied to the fabric to secure it as would have been done over 100 years ago. Lastly, the final polish. Here, we are using beeswax. Now, let's see a before and after to really appreciate this restoration. Wow, look at that amazing transformation. From a beaten old frame to a fully restored antique chair. This restoration is now complete.